Welcome to Working Through It Wednesday with the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. Today we are here with Samantha Martinez and she is going to share a little bit with us about the top five things you need to know about your school psychologist. Before I introduce her, just wanted to point out the QR code here to please fill out a five question survey at the end so that we can know exactly how to continue to provide professional development and learning resources to the community. So thank you all for being here and I'm going to introduce Samantha real quick. Uh, Samantha is originally from New Jersey but traveled to the South to North Carolina for her undergraduate studies at Queens University of South Carolina. At Queens, Samantha majored in psychology and double minored in sociology and music. Samantha then pursued her master's in social work at the University of South Carolina where she worked specifically with children, youth, and families. Samantha is now a third year doctoral student in the school psychology program where she's part of the behavioral of the school behavioral lab and mentored by Dr. Mark Wiest. Samantha has research and clinical interests related to mental health and schools, grief and loss and tiered approaches to support. And she's overall a fabulous person. So Samantha, thank you so much for being here and sharing a little bit with us. I'll allow you to take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to try to make the presentation quick and get us to the five points. Um, effectively knowing that uh, most people's ability to kind of stay engaged is shortened, including my own. So what I'm going to do is um, share my video or my presentation with you all here. And so essentially like the, the purpose of the presentation today is what is a school psych? And it's coming from a graduate student's perspective. That's me, the five things you might wanna know. And I, I, these are the five things that I wanted to know. These are five things that parents may want to know, five things that graduate students or interested undergrads in grad school may want to know. And that's kind of how I came up with these five things. Um, so who am I? Who's the one speaking to you? So yeah, as Aaron um, mentioned, my name is Samantha Martinez. Got my undergrad at the university, or at, excuse me, at Queens University of Charlotte in North Carolina, and um, my MSW here from the University of South Carolina, and stuck around at USC, go Gamecocks. And I just want to um, highlight that the contributions for this PowerPoint is really the USC School Behavioral Health Lab. Um, and then the USC Yes Lab, uh, Amanda Davis and Anna Flitner have developed a similar presentation for those interested in grad school and was able to adapt some of that for this presentation as well as NASP. So that was as quick as I could get it out um, in the Jersey speech. So today's presentation is gonna be the five things you might wanna know about a school psych. So how to become a school psychologist? What does someone have to do to become a school psych? What are the career options in school psychology, roles and responsibilities? Where might you see a school psychologist? I always find that interesting. Like, where would you find them? And then the benefits of being a school psychologist, and uh, those are a bit subjective. <laughs> so here's how people become a school psychologist. There's several degree options. So if you're a parent and you're sitting uh, in front of a school psychologist, you might be wondering, how did they get here? What are they doing? What's their education level? Why are they telling me about my child, right? So we have a specialist level and we have the doctoral level. And what you'll see in front of you are the different uh, parts of being a specialist level or a doctoral level. And those are differentiated by credit hours, time for graduation, and internship requirements. So you can read those there, but the main thing that you'll see is the amount of credit hours and internship hours is really the, the main difference, I would say, between the special specialist level and the doctoral level. One caveat that I want to uh, mention at the doctoral level in particular our graduate programs can be in the College of Education as well as um, the College of Arts and Sciences in the psychology department. So here at the University of South Carolina, we are a school psych program in the psychology department. And that's, a, that's different from those that receive um, a school psychologist degree or an educational uh, psychologist degree in a, uh, in a department of ed department. Um, so just something to think about. But I think that's always good to know as community members and parents, as well as those that may be interested in psych becoming a school psych, that there are differences of how you can become a school psychologist. So some people aren't interested in the doctoral level because maybe they're not as interested in doing a dissertation uh, and more research. And that's okay. The, the, just as qualified to be a specialist level and get that work in and work you know, in the schools and 
shorter amount of time. You get into the schools quicker, you're doing exactly what you want to do. So lots of similarities here, but you will see the difference in credential uh, in credit hours, excuse me, and time to graduate as well as internship requirements. So here are some career options in school psychology, and this may be helpful um, to just note some of the differences. So a specialist level, you will likely see them in the schools or educational settings. This is where you'll usually see um, the specialist level. And sometimes depending on their um, internship that they, they took or if they have done licensure, they may be at a private practice as well. So you might see them there. Whereas at the doctoral level, you're likely to see them in the schools or educational settings too, um, but you may see them more in that private practice setting they are providing maybe some more clinical skills, maybe in therapy sessions. You may see them in the hospital setting, providing consultations to families, right? And then most uh, of the time, you will see them in research and academia, working on areas related to school psychology and trying to figure out what can school psychs at the individual level be doing and how does uh, research highlights the needs of kiddos and kind of helping them at that individual level. So what are some of the roles and responsibilities? Where are we going to see them, right? So here we go. We're at kind of, I think this is three, right? Three of the five things you want to know, but what does a school psych do? So psychoeducation assessments are huge for school psychs. They are determining overall academic, social, behavioral, and emotional functioning needs of a student. And they're doing this specifically to identify if this child or student needs additional special education services. Do they need any special education services? Are they in the right classroom? Are they in the least restrictive environment, right? Are they getting the supports that they need to maximize their experience in the classroom? Are they receiving a quality you know, education at that basic level? And that's what we're trying to figure out. And so we might see kiddos, right, that are uh, more hyperactive in the classroom. They're, they're having difficulty paying attention. And so a school psych might come in and you might see them in a classroom observing, right? Uh, you might have a kiddo sit down to do some additional testing. Like, what's going on here? Are we hungry a lot of the time and we're just not meeting that need? Or is there an actual diagnosis that we could place on this, you know, kid to identify for this kiddo to best support them? It's the only reason why we would diagnose is to ensure that they're getting the best supports that they need in schools. You might also see a school psych providing consultation, right? So this may be they're sitting with the teacher, a teacher is having some behavioral concerns in their classroom. Teachers, uh, please reach out to your school psych. They have a lot of expertise in being able to chat with you. Sometimes it's just nights. Uh, teachers know their classroom the best and they are the expert on their classroom. And a school psych can come in as another pair of eyes to say, you know what, I saw this. Or you know, a teacher might say, can you take a look? I think I'm missing something. And they might observe and come sit in the classroom and provide some support. They may provide some consultation in other areas within the school. Maybe they're developing a positive behaviors in schools and they might provide consultation on different plans and objectives that could be implemented. And you might see them around the table for that. You might see a school psych at uh, graduate, you know, you're talking to seniors about graduation. They might be at a meeting talking to seniors about what, what does it look like after you graduate from high school? What's next? And providing some consultation to the admin there about how to talk to the seniors, talking to the seniors about what it might look like. So they work, the consultation is definitely more related to larger systems work. School psychs also provide interventions, right? So you might see this at an individual level, a group therapy level. So they're providing direct intervention. What does that really mean? So you might see them at a therapy session, right? You might see them at a group um, therapy session. So school psychs have training in sitting down and providing clinical expertise to help individuals who may be experiencing concerns related to depression, anxiety, uh, maybe just some study skills and needing to sit in a group you know, about building those as well within the school system. I know a lot of school psychs who will have different, you know, groups for emerging of age groups, right? Of like getting all, you know, the, the sixth grade girls in a group therapy session to talk about what does that mean? You know, what does that look like for the, the sixth grade boys? What does that look like? And maybe bring them all together. How do we communicate as we are going into middle school and, and the different changes that may be occurring there? Um, so those are some of those roles and responsibilities. There's a few more, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth here on the, the presentation that I, that I do wanna indicate as well that you may um, in a little bit that I'll, that I'll highlight, so pardon me. So where would you see them? Kind of highlighted that in some of the roles and responsibilities. 
And so you may see them in what we call an individual education plan, a 504 meeting. So parents, if you are in an IEP meeting, there are lots of people sitting around that table saying lots of different things that may not make sense. The point of that school psych is to really help you understand as a parent, what are the rights, your child's rights to, um, to educational supports? What are your rights as a parent? They're there to provide recommendations and just kind of let you know what's going on and hopefully make the report make sense. And that's really what that school psych. So when you're sitting in a meeting, if you're like, I need a helping hand, ask for who the school psych is and they will definitely be there to support and be an advocate for you and your student um, or your child. You might see them on hospital consultation rounds. Sometimes, especially in the hemoc oncology units in the pediatric wing of a hospital, they may do rounds and you might see them, right? There's lots of doctors standing there and you're like, who's this other person that's not maybe holding a clipboard? It might be a school site, right? So they might be there to connect with families and students about the educational needs of a kiddo who's in the hospital. What's going on? What are they missing out on? How can we get them support after surgery? What does that look like? Maybe give them, uh, maybe talk with them at an interventions level. You might see them in a therapy session. They could be sitting right across from you. A lot of times we hear of a clinical psychologist and oftentimes school psychs can get roped into that, but it may be a school psych. They may have gotten school psych training and have the clinical tools and abilities to, to meet with you in a therapeutic setting. You may see them on an, a university campus, right? So you may see them teaching courses. They may be providing supervision to students that are training to be school psychologist as well. So you might see them there. Here's my slide about the other roles and responsibilities because it doesn't stop there with the three roles and responsibilities that we already went over. School psychs, um, roles and responsibilities are also research and education. They're constantly getting involved in learning about the research and what's happening within the field. That is critical uh, for them to continue to share their expertise with others to make sure that they are informed. You may see them in in-service trainings at schools. So teachers, you might be like, okay, this person has been talking to me about psychoeducation and assessment and, and how to do behavioral interventions in my classroom. It might be a school psych talking to you and telling you about kind of their expertise. So you may see them there. You also may see uh, another role and responsibility is uh, administration. So typically a school psych within, within the school setting or an educational setting is a part of the administration staff. So you may see them uh, sitting around a table to make decisions about changes that may need to occur at the school, creating roles and responsibilities of, you know, teachers and students and what that may look like. You may see them at school board meetings talking about ways to best support our students and various uh, opportunities that, that we can do that. So these are other roles and responsibilities of school psychs. So if it hasn't been clear enough, school psychs have a lot of roles and responsibilities, and you may see them in a variety of settings. And so just something to keep an eye out uh, if you are a parent or a teacher or just trying to figure out what a school psych is and does. Uh, essentially, they do a lot, and they're a part of a lot of different teams in a variety of capacities. Here are the benefits to being a school psych. So this is my final kind of tidbit to you, and hopefully I've kept this quick enough for you guys to stay engaged, is that what we're... We get to work with amazing family and kiddos. We, I, I love that part of the, the job. We meet so many different people. There's a flexible career options, right? So uh, you'll notice that not only do we see them within the community and different careers, as if you want to be a school psychologist, you have very a lot of flexibility with uh, your career options and what you can do. You wanna work in a school? Great. You wanna work in a hospital? Do it. You wanna work in private practice? That's an option too, right? So there's lots of options. You get well-rounded experiences. You get to work in different uh, fields. Uh, and like I said, kind of just adding to that flexibility and, and you get these well-rounded experiences. The roles and responsibilities as indicated show that you get to be a part of a lot of different teams. It also highlights that uh, as community members and teachers, you may see school psychs on a lot of different teams and that's because they have the ability to do that. I think that it also provides creativity and innovation. This is a field that's ever growing and, and learning from the students that they work with and the families that contribute to that work. And so school psychs are really creative and innovative and trying to figure out what is the need of the populations that they're trying to serve. And so they can be that voice and help provide that creativity and innovation that may be needed. There's diverse placement options, right? You can, schools are everywhere, <laughs> even if they're telehealth, right? Even if we're currently in teleschool or if you're in in-person school, whatever that may look like, your school psych is around. Um, and so you have these diverse placement options across the country and world, uh, which is really awesome. 
and it's really fun and enjoyable. It's a great field and um, school psychs, I think have a good time uh, providing the various services that they do. Uh, students and kiddos and families, I think it's say that even when it tends to be difficult, uh, it, it whatever reason that they're coming to see a school site, it is still fun and enjoyable. And the hope is that we provide the services that those families need. Whew. So I think I did it in a, hopefully in record time. I'm not sure if it, it did, but I appreciate you all listening. I hope these five kind of tips help you kind of better understand what a school psychologist does, is, where you'll see them, how you can be one, and all of the above. And so the intention is that community members, teachers, students, anyone pursuing a career in school psychology can benefit from this presentation. So I appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samantha. That was amazing. As a school psychologist myself, I feel like I learned quite a few things and maybe finally now understand what it is that I do. So <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. You have such a great engaging personality and you kept it really quick. So that was fabulous. Uh, this has been Working Through It Wednesday with the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. Thanks everyone so much and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.